Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade, and this is the Oh My God Show. And we are reading through the Bible, and we are in the book of Exodus. Now, the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has a total of 66 books. Now, each book is divided into chapters and verses. Now, the Bible has the ability to change your life because it has changed mine. Now, we are in Exodus chapter twenty. The Israelites are wandering through the desert and they're now getting instructions from God. And there is a lot of spectacle going on with uh, the Israelites. And now we see where God really is getting their attention and he wants to give them some kind of uh, commands. Uh, in chapter 20, verse 1, it says, And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in, in the form of anything in the heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. So you know that lots of people, they are making um, carved images or so and they call it their God. So God is saying, I am your God. Do not make these kind of gods. Don't make anything like this, these kinds of images. Now in verse 5, it said, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generation to, of those who love me and keep my commandments. So you see again, God can punish to the third and fourth generation of those people who don't love him, who actually hate him, while he says that he can bless those people who worship him, who love him, who keeps his commandments to the thousand generation. Now, I am excited about this. Again, for me, a revelation because I've read these scriptures before and I didn't notice this part. Like, especially in the New Testament, you're going to see a lot spoken about, you know, being cursed to the third and fourth generation. But, how many of us Christians realize that the blessing is going to go to the thousand, <laughs> to the thousand generation? Glory be to God. So again, it's kind of showing as well how God is merciful because the wickedness is going to go third to fourth generation. Imagine if the wickedness of your great, 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 great infinity grandparents coming to affect you now in your life. It's only the third and fourth. But when you are blessed, it can proceed it can supersede and what do you call the word? I don't know which is the best English word now. I'm so excited. That can go to the thousand of generation. If you didn't notice this um, comment about this one, like if you notice it, like I've never ever heard anyone really preaching about this part, but God's blessing will go to thousands of generation. In short, we should seek to be blessed by God and not, you don't want to be in God's enemy book or, you know, or you don't want God to take you off his friend list. Right. So in verse seven, it says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuse his name. So many people, they come and they lie and they are wicked to people and they're, they, 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 they molest kids and they do lots of very bad things in the name of God. God don't want that. If you want to call on God, don't call his name out in vain because God God does like that. I feel as well that when we are calling on the name of the Lord, we should mean it. We should want him. Now, in verse 8, it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Now, this verse or uh, this scripture is one of the most controversial, I think, in Christianity, because you have so many divisions of Christianity. And um, some people believe we should not keep the Sabbath. It's an old thing. Some people keep, still think we should. But the funny thing is that most secular world system, they actually... You know, for most jobs, for example, you are required by law to give your employee a day off. You are designed to rest because that's how we were designed. Now, God is God. And in Genesis, you will see where God rested on the seventh day. Now, God didn't need to rest. So obviously, 
He did it. He was creating the world with his words. That's how cool God is. He didn't need to rest, but I think he matched that for us. So some people don't say, okay, they're going to not work Saturday, Sunday or whatever. But again, there is, there has to be like a day off for most countries and cultures where someone has to get a rest. And I think this is where it stemmed from. Now in verse 12, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the law, in the land and the Lord your God is giving you. Um, you have, we are required to honor our parents. Now, a lot of us uh, struggle with that. There's a lot of point in my life where I have to struggle with that. I don't want to go into that because I don't want to make this video too long. But I, it took me a long time to really understand this kind of uh, verse because like, uh, yeah, it's a long story. But for a lot of us, we don't really understand the importance. So many of us, maybe we were, we were from broken homes and we didn't get the love of our father or mothers. And we feel like we have a right to hate them. We have a right to disrespect them or we have a right to do whatever. But then we also sometimes grow up and we have kids and then we wonder why our kids don't respect us and why our kids treat us a certain way. So this is very deep, but God expects us to honor them. Now, it took me a while to realize that my parents, I heard this, to be honest, years ago in a Tyler Perry movie when he said that your parents, they don't owe you nothing but to give birth to you technically. Because again, at the end of the day, they gave birth to you and irrespective of what they did, we can choose to forgive them. We can choose to still love them anyway. We saw Joyce Meyer, for example, where she was molested sexually for many years by her father. And before he died, she and her husband took him in, showed him love. This man you know, was so repentant and he even gave his life to Christ before dying. Now, do not think that when someone, whether it's a mother or a father or uncle or friends or family or whatever, that when they do you dog dirty, that when they do something bad to you and God says, honor them, love them, respect them, don't think that God is making you act the fool because God always finds a way to reward people for their bad deeds you know no sin goes unpunished right so anyway i don't know if that will make any sense to you but he respected because i know some people are gonna be like oh but my mom did this my dad did this whatever whatever i it took me years 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 to be able to have this conversation with you know it wasn't even planned like i just saw the scripture but it took me years to realize that yes when god says something he knows why i would hate to have a daughter who doesn't love me or a child who doesn't care about me or mistreats me or disrespects me i don't think i'm cut out for that kind of thing you know so please remember to honor your, your mom and your dad whether and god didn't say the mom and dad that did good and the ones who sent you to college and paid for your degree and buy you you know cars on your 16th birthday he just said mother and father finish anyway um anyway in verse 13 it says you shall not murder right now in genesis you will see where blood has a voice and blood speak you don't want to have some dead body <laughs> some blood crying out to god like have mercy because you killed that person now so like it's not good to kill people no matter what they did it's better to let them live god will god will tell you not to do anything but don't believe that god is not doing anything uh, in verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not, don't tell lie against people. When you lie against people, you know, sometimes you, I call it a white lie or so on. Sometimes you tell a white lie to get yourself out of trouble or you do this or whatever. But this lie is specific. I'm not saying that white lie, every lie is lie because we are the ones who call it white lie. I never saw white lie in the Bible. But some people tell lies on people that cause them their lives, that puts them in prison, that does, that destroy their families. You know, you see some of these stories where they exonerate criminals who their parents and their families are dead 70 years, 100 years, 50 years, 20 years. But that lie that was told, it, it, it took some time, 20 years, 50 years. And sometimes as well, you're putting that person that you lied against in a position to probably never feel like they want to forgive you. And we have all done things against people or said things, but remember when we are saying these things that in, in the moment seems so honest, seems so innocent, it can destroy people's careers, people's families, people's lives. So it's not good to lie against people. Now, uh, in verse 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox, or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor we are living in a generation now where our neighbor can be someone in australia our neighbor can be someone in barbados our neighbor because we turn on youtube i love youtube 
and i always see you see those people their houses their cars their husbands their wives their family sometimes even me i watch youtube i like, like to watch the family um channel and you cannot help yourself like oh my gosh i want to have a family like this oh my gosh i want to have this you can admire people but we have to be careful not to become jealous where you're like that girl has like a big house by the beach in some exotic island and i'm just here picking cotton <laughs> you know and you can get very jealous and um i'm not saying sometimes these people they're not criminals they literally got their money by honest means you can't even say oh they're criminals i'm not you know i'm not doing that but you can become so jealous you see the girls on instagram that are more fashionable they have lots of nice clothes you you see so many things in social media not all is true but it doesn't really matter if it's true or not because you might not know what is true from what is a lie and you desire the things that are there but god is saying don't be jealous you see someone and the wife is so beautiful and you're like my wife is not as pretty as my friend's wife you know i and maybe it might lead you to have an affair with that woman or lead you to resent the wife that you have because she's not pretty enough she's not turning heads in verse 18 when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke they trembled with fear they stayed at a distance and said to Moses speak to us yourself and we will listen but do not have God speak to us or we die remember how they were so you know you know complaining and everything they were about to sneak in to see the presence of God and God told them stay back because I don't want you to die and now God is so majestic and powerful and terrifying at the same time that they're like, it's fine. We are not curious anymore. We don't want to see him. Let him continue to talk to you. And then we will listen to you. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning again. The Israelites to this date has seen mostly the grace, the mercy, the compassion of God. God is fighting for them even when they're playing and acting the fool, so to speak. But now God has shown them that I can be terror, you know, and he could have killed them long time ago from the time they were complaining from the time he could have decided even not to save them in the first place. So this terror that he's showing them is that I am your dad, but I can whoop you. If you get out of line, I will whoop you. And that's what God is showing them at this point. And, um, yeah, and Moses is saying, don't worry, he's just testing you. Come on, if you wanted to kill you, you wouldn't have mouth to speak right now. Now, in verse 21, it says, the people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites this, you have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. Initially, that was God's original plan. I will escape. I will get you escaped out of sex. I will allow you to escape out of slavery. You will go to the wilderness where you can worship me, where you can make sacrifices to me. Now, if you make an altar of stones for me, do not build it with dressed stones for you will defile it if you use a tool on it and do not go up to my altars on steps or your private parts my may be exposed again god is very specific he knows what he wants when he wants how he wants it because he is after all god of all gods king of all kings savior of the hebrews okay now a prayer for you father god i thank you for your grace and your mercy i thank you god that you have brought us to a place where we can now praise you worship you and make sacrifices to you lord i thank you because you are a good god because you are gracious because you are merciful because you are loving and lovely and because you have the ability to forgive us of our sins oh god and to wash us clean to cleanse us to pick us up even when we are falling thank you for all you do and have done in our lives in jesus christ's name amen thank you so much for watching i'm blade and i will see you next time bye